Hi, let's talk about sound. P5JS can make sounds using several ways. One is an oscillator. An oscillator creates a tone, and here is a program that plays a tone at 440 hertz. Four hundred and forty hertz happens to be the A above middle C on a piano, and that's the note that an orchestra tunes to. The oboist plays that note, and then everybody tunes to it. Although I'm guessing that the musicians all have digital tuners, and they probably are pretty well tuned by the time the oboe plays. Anyway, um, how does this work? We create an oscillator like this. And then we set the frequency we want with this method call. And then we call start. And that's all there is to it. That makes it go. Um, let's try some different frequencies. Let's play a note an octave lower. That's half the frequency. That's an interesting thing about music and octaves. When you go up an octave, you double the frequency. When you go down an octave, you have the frequency. So I could also say um, 440 times 2 gives us a higher pitch. Okay, so that's that little example. I'm going to just put this back the way it was. And I have a link to the oscillator reference on the p5js.org website. Uh, you can learn about the different types of oscillators you can make and how to set the frequency and the amplitude, which is the volume. And you can even pan left and right. You can have the sound move to the left and right speakers. Okay, next, in this next example, we can control the frequency with the mouse X position. And that happens because of this function, mouse moved, that gets called whenever we move the mouse. And this sort of complicated expression here gives us frequencies between 200 hertz and 1000 hertz. Hertz, it means cycles per second. Sound waves um, occur at certain frequencies and they're measured in, in hertz. So 200 cycles per second is 200 hertz and so on. Uh, and what we're doing here is we're taking the position of the mouse, which goes from zero to the screen width, minus one, really. And then we're mapping that into this range. So if you wanted lower numbers, you could say, for instance, 200 to 300. Now they don't vary all that much. Or if you wanted them to be mostly higher pitches, you could say 1,000 to maybe 5,000. Prepare yourself, this might be a little louder. Uh, okay, so that is an example of um, changing the frequency using the mouse X position. Um, I'm going to jump to this next, because this is part of challenge six, do something creative with sound. Um, here's an example of something that you might make. And it's just really kind of silly nonsense. Um, what does it do? We have this array of colors. And I slow down the frame rate. Now, let me just show you what, hap what would happen if I didn't have this. I'm going to put slash slash in front to temporarily remove that line. <laughs> so uh, if you wanted to go even slower, you could decrease the frame rate to maybe two. Okay, and let's see what else is in here. So the background random colors, random is a function in, in P5JS. If you give it an array like this, it'll randomly choose one of these uh, elements of the array, and then it uses that. And then the frequency is just random between these two um, values.
Now, the pitch matching game uh, is kind of fun. I like it. It uses two oscillators. And it will first play a tone, which I'll listen to very carefully. It'll play it in the, the left channel. And then uh, a little later, it'll play a second tone in the right channel. And I can control the frequency of the second tone with the mouse's X position. And the objective is to try to match the first frequency by moving, changing the second frequency. You'll hear. Uh, here we go. So there's the first one. Now you hear the second one, kind of close. That's pretty close. Also, do you hear those beats? The woo 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 woo. That's the difference in the. That happens at. Um, how many do you think that is per second? I'm going to guess four. If I click here and look at the console, it was 4.35. That's the difference in the frequencies between the two um, oscillators. So I got pretty close. Let's play it again. When I get really close, the beats slow down and eventually disappear. Yeah, you might be interested in looking up um, beats uh, in sound. So I think that's it. Oh, I was not as close as I could have been. That's a little bit better. Okay, how does this program work? Well, here we have two oscillators. And this is kind of fun if you want to make chords. I think this is called uh, polyphony. Poly meaning many and phony meaning sound, I believe. Many sounds. And we create two oscillators and then we have two variables that we're going to use to remember the frequencies of the two oscillators. And then in setup, we create the canvas, we set the background, and then we randomly choose the first frequency between 100 and 800 hertz. And then frequency two is chosen um, near frequency one. So it goes from uh, the range of numbers it could have are uh, is from 0.9 times the first frequency and 1.1 times. So it's like 10% less to 10% more. And then we set the oscillator one for the first frequency to pan into the left channel. And then we set the frequency and we set the frequency for number two. And then we pan that to the right channel. And then we start oscillator one. That's why we hear the first tone um, immediately. Then in draw, we wait until 60 frames of 59 frames have passed, and on the 60th frame, we start the second oscillator. And then uh, this function finds the frequency from the mouse position. I think maybe I won't explain this right now. And then the mouse moved function sets the frequency of the second oscillator based on this what this function returns. And then when we click the mouse, we just display on the console the absolute value of the difference in the frequencies, uh, kind of rounded to two decimal places. Okay, so that's kind of a fun thing to uh, play with, but our job is to do something creative with sound here in challenge six. Um, use what you've learned about oscillator to make something creative and interesting. And I gave an example, which was the one we looked at before. Let's look at that again. Maybe we can just modify it and come up with something creative and interesting. Um, let's run this again. Okay, so how about I do a, um, a variation on this? Rather than having the background change to all those colors, I'm going to have um, just random rectangles appear. So I'm going to just, here in setup, I'm going to make the background uh, white. And then here in draw, I'm still going to use random colors, but I'm going to use that as the fill color for a rectangle. And I'll set the, I'll make the rectangle here with rect, and I'm going to put it at random uh, x and y coordinates and give it random width and height. So um, for the x coordinate, I want it to be somewhere between, I guess we'll just say uh, zero and the width. And then for the y coordinate, I'm just selecting here and copy, paste, paste. Uh, somewhere between zero and the height. 
And then for the width, what should we say? Let's just say random between mm, 10 and maybe 50. And then the same thing for the height. And then the frequency, I'll adjust that. Maybe I'll just keep them a little bit lower. Let's have them go um, between 200 and say 500. And this alone is enough to be, a, um, I, I consider this an original creative work. This satisfies the challenge. Let's see what it looks like. Uh, let's turn off the stroke. We'll do that with no stroke. Now it's like this. So that's sort of interesting. And what if we um, just take off this and so we can get a faster frame rate? <laughs> Maybe that's too fast. Maybe 10? That's decent. Okay, so that was an example of a solution to challenge six, do something creative with sound, with an oscillator.